Hello my friends, welcome to a very off-the-cuff bite-sized thumb together because it's time to talk about my reaction to what just happened at San Diego Comic-Con. I made a little comment, I think it was in the last episode of Real Deal where I said, you know what, I don't think Star Wars is going to have a very big presence at Comic-Con whatsoever. I think they're going to save all their big news for uh, Star Wars Celebration over in April. And that'll be it. And I was talking like this, really condescending. Turns out I was wrong because they dropped a big bombshell just a few minutes ago less than an hour ago at san diego comic-con they dropped a trailer for a revived clone wars cartoon that's right we are getting season seven of the clone wars and what a trailer this was holy shit man it started off with this beautiful rolling shot with all these clone trooper helmets and then we got this shot of this base here then we got Anakin and Obi-Wan, and Anakin's hair is longer than it's been on the show, which means we're really getting close to Episode 3 territory. And to top it all off, Anakin and Obi-Wan receive a hologram from none other than Miss Ahsoka Tano and some Mandalorian person who's hanging out with her. At first I thought this was Sabine Wren, but it's not Sabine Wren, and they wouldn't know each other yet. This is the trailer, and it was beautiful, and it was brief, but now it just has me asking a billion questions. Now, first of all, if you're a big Star Wars fan and you don't know this yet, I have a presence on another channel, Rebel Scum Podcast. My good friends Brock and James and Rob and Aaron, uh, we all get together and talk about Star Wars. And you can check out Rebel Scum Podcast in the link below. And I've got a video there talking about my reaction to, but I wanted to make one here for my channel as well. Because this is a big question mark now. We're getting a season seven and I'm not 100% sure why. Here's the thing. The Clone Wars lasted three years in, you know, story time. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six seasons of that three-year war. We got a lot of Clone Wars. We're good. We're covered. Now, yes, the show was canceled prematurely because of the Disney buyout, but... This isn't like a, a situation like Twin Peaks or Firefly where a show got canceled, you know, before it could finish saying what it wanted to say. No, this was fun stories about the Clone Wars that, yes, they left some loose ends hanging, but they've been tying up those loose ends in other creative ways. I mean, we had novels like Dark Disciple, which was going to be a Clone Wars arc. They just turn it into a novel. Same with this, the Ahsoka novel. This talks about everything that Ahsoka went through after she left the Academy and became sort of a Ronin Jedi and uh, ran from the Empire for many, many years. It's not my favorite book in the new canon, but it's it tells that story. We follow the further adventures of Ahsoka and Rex and Darth Maul in Star Wars Rebels. Rebels kind of served as a quasi-sequel to Clone Wars. There was even an episode called The Last Battle, which was about the last battle of the Clone Wars between clone troopers and battle droids. It was great. You need to watch it. It's a fun episode. So that's my question. As much as I loved this trailer and as much as I am excited for Clone Wars Season 7 and you bet your ass I'm going to watch it, I'm just so curious as to why Lucasfilm Story Group chose this particular moment in the canon timeline to shed more light on. I mean, of all the things they could tell us, there's so much space between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. There's so much space in Old Republic. There's surprisingly space between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. That is an untapped gold mine right now. But they're still focusing on that little sliver of time between Season 6 of Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. There's not a lot of time in between those two. It's so tiny. What story is going to happen in there that's worth reviving the show. That's what I want to know. But again, I'm not ragging on the Clone Wars. I love it. I'm a fan. I love that all these characters are coming back. I just can't wait to learn the reason because I I feel like Story Group, if they were going to revive this show like this, they would have a very good reason to do so. Because remember, they got tons of stuff already on the go. They've got this Resistance cartoon, this 2D hand-drawn cartoon that's coming out. I'm sure Dave Filoni has another 3D cartoon down the line. Jon Favreau's got his show. We've got all these other stories happening. We've got tons of comic books and novels going on. What is happening in this Season 7 of Clone Wars that merits a total revival of the show? Quick bullet points. Here's what I think we're going to see 
on season seven. Ahsoka having one last physical meeting with Anakin Skywalker. I know this is kind of obvious from the trailer, but she isn't a hologram. It doesn't count as a physical meeting. I think they're going to meet one more time before he turns into the Dark Lord of the Sith, and we might get some closure on that, but it won't be anything too grand. I just think that's a small thing that's going to happen and be more, you know, quiet and emotional scene. Darth Maul. When we last left Darth Maul in Clone Wars, he was set to become a slave slash prisoner to Darth Sidious. And the next time we see him, which is in Rebels, he is on Malachor alone, just doing his own thing. We get one more little bit of Darth Maul in between that time period, and that happened in Solo, a Star Wars story, when he was talking with Kira. So he's still a crime lord at that point. So how does he go from crime lord to slave to the emperor to crime lord again to desolate and destitute on Malachor? There's some puzzle pieces of Darth Maul that we don't have all the answers to yet. This show better give us some, otherwise it's a wasted opportunity. Tell us how he got away from Sidious, how he ended up where he was. We can't show Kira, I don't think, because all that stuff in Solo happened after the Empire was formed and we're not there yet chronologically. Number three, Cad Bane. Everybody wants to see Cad Bane. The bounty hunters are popular, but him especially so. We don't know what his fate is, if he's still alive or what have you, but I know I want to see Cad Bane and a lot of people do. I think Filoni's going to throw him in there. It only makes sense. Finally, number four, Jar Jar Binks. And I'm not joking. With all the horrible, horrible things that certain horrible people have been doing to the cast and crew of current Star Wars movies. I'm talking about Kelly Marie Tran, Daisy Ridley, Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, Ahmed Best. What people have been saying and doing to these people who have just been working hard to give us great material and great entertainment has been disgusting. What a great way it would be to sort of shove it in those people's faces than to bring back Jar Jar Binks again and have some sort of glorious Jar Jar moment with Ahmed Best playing him and sort of spit in the faces of all those people who decided to just be negative Nancys and babies. That all sounds like stuff that could happen in season seven, but I'm still waiting to figure out what this season is going to give us that's so damn important that it needs to exist in the first place because I have no idea what it could be. What do you think it is, my friends? Let me know in the comments. But that's just my quick little take on the trailer for Clone Wars Season 7. It's happening. Here we go. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I will see you here next time. And until then, adios.